The federal government says hospice fraud costs taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. But an Action News Jack's investigation has uncovered hospices accused of fraud are only getting a slap on the wrist. Action News Jack's investigator Jenna Bourne spent four months digging into this, and she's asking the feds whether enough is being done to protect taxpayers. But my signature is on paperwork that I didn't sign. That was one of the first red flags for hospice whistleblower Dr. John Simons. He's a former medical director at Haven Hospice and Hospice of the Treasure Coast. Hospices where people go for end-of-life care. But Dr. Simons says he saw a pattern of hospices taking patients with plenty of life left to live, billing Medicare hundreds of dollars a day. And there was a, a CEO down at one point who basically just told us, you know, to just do it and shut up. You know, we didn't have an option. But Dr. Simons did have an option. He became a whistleblower for the federal government. The U.S. Attorney's Office hit both Haven Hospice and Treasure Coast with False Claims Act lawsuits. Both hospices settled last year. But that's not the end of the story. The penalties don't meet the, the crime, if you will. The government accused Haven Hospice of defrauding taxpayers out of hundreds of millions, but Haven only had to pay up about $5 million. The government accused Treasure Coast of defrauding taxpayers out of $72 million. They settled for $2.5 million. I kept digging through federal court records and found every Florida hospice hit with a False Claims Act lawsuit settled for a fraction of the amount they're accused of taking fraudulently. Assistant Special Agent Brian Martens works for the federal agency that investigates hospice fraud. He tells me every Medicare dollar taken fraudulently is a dollar that can't be used by a dying patient who actually needs it. And he says the money could run out within a decade. If a hospice could potentially get away with defrauding taxpayers out of hundreds of millions of dollars, what incentive is there to be honest? I guess um, when they submit claims, right, and they get a large lion's share of money back, right, um, we then, when we investigate, have to look at what is the, um, what we can prove is fraud and bring forward. There is a potential risk that people could be investigated and go to jail. An Office of Inspector General report last month identified vulnerabilities in the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Oversight that are putting patients and taxpayers at risk. And the Inspector General found CMS has no way of penalizing hospitals behaving badly other than cutting off the hospice from the Medicare program. I called every Florida hospice that settled with the government. None of them wanted to talk, but they did ask the president of the Florida Hospice and Palliative Care Association to talk to me instead. So we drove to Tallahassee to meet up with them. Why didn't hospices want to tell me their side of the story? What did they tell you? Well, uh, I think most of them uh, view it as sort of a private matter now. You know, that they've, they've reached a corporate integrity agreement. But these are tax dollars we're talking about. Right. It's public money. Right, and they're giving it back. Uh, uh, a it, fraction of what they're being accused of right. defrauding. Right. Um, but you have to look at the process. Paul Ledford tells me these lawsuits more often stem from differences in medical opinions and poor record keeping than intentional fraud. The whistleblowers uh, invariably uh, tell a story that's more dramatic then the facts will bear out. Dr. Simons no longer works in hospice care. He was awarded about a million dollars as part of the settlements. He tells me he has little hope that the hospices will change their ways. A small slap on the wrist, you know, I think, unfortunately, some hospices may continue that behavior. If you suspect a company is committing health care fraud, you have the power to report it. We've got the information you need on our website and mobile app. Reporting, Jenna Bourne, CBS 47, Action News Jax.